One of the things I love the most about designing and animation is adding texture. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over a couple of different ways you can add texture to your animations in After Effects. So without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects where I have a composition set up. It is just a slight little 4k composition at 24 frames per second and I've just set up a grid and then a text layer. So we have the background here, which is just a slightly off black background. We have the grid, which is just solid with the grid effect added and then just adjust the settings a little bit and then a text layer. And finally, an adjustment layer, which is where we are going to be demonstrating the different texture effects. The first way of creating texture is through tabulant displays. I use it all the time. It just looks super cool and it helps create a little bit of a hand drawn type of feel. So if I select my adjustment layer and then open FX console and add tabulant displays, we get this, which looks super wicked. I usually make two instances, so the first one I'll set to 8x8 and that's just going to give us just a little bit of that wobble if I toggle you can kind of see just gives us a little bit more detail and then I open up the evolution options alt click the random seed and then I'm going to add a posterized time and then set that to 6 you can set it to whatever you want you can even leave it out and then I'm going to set a random and then 3 that tends to give me a pretty good result so it's just going to animate all throughout the project, just giving it a random value between 0 and 3. So you can increase it to however much if you want it to switch between 500 numbers, you can do that, which is just going to give you some more variation. And that's where the posterized time can really help decide the speed of how it animates. I'm going to duplicate the table and displace, then I'm going to increase the amount to 30 and set the size to 2. As you can see, that just gives us a little bit more of like a pencil sketch look. And I love that look. You can even do it without the first instance. It's up to you. I like to put them together just because it adds just a nice little bit of movement. Especially if you combine it with some really simple animation, add some post-rise time to your composition, you're good to go. Now, the second way of adding texture is through displacement maps. So I'm going to add a displacement map effect to our adjustment layer. And as you can see, we've already got some happening. It's taken the texture text and then applying it so if i move it it looks all sorts of weird for this we actually need another layer which is going to drive the texture for the sake of this example we can go in and we can just add a fractal noise and then if i add that effect to it we can hide this and if i go back into my texture layer and then set the displacement map layer to the fractal noise and effects in mask you can see that it's taken the black and white values and then distorting the image with those pixels. I have some textures here already. So if I just take this one, for example, add in here, and it is photocopy type thing, hide it, go back into my adjustment layer, and then set the displacement map layer to it. It's taking the layer and then applying the distortion based on that. So that is displacement maps. You can get some really nice texturing with it, especially with those photocopy type of textures. And that brings us to the third way of adding texture. This is something I saw Ben Marriott do a long time ago, and I've been using it a lot. We're also going to remix it a little bit. So in his tutorial, he adds a camera lens blur, one of my favorite effects of all time. It basically takes black and white values and uses them to generate blur. So we're going to create a new solid and I'm just going to name that blur map. And then I'm going to add a fractal noise. And then if I crank up this scale and then increase the contrast a little bit. And if I hide that, go to my texture and then in my camera lens blur, set the layer to blur map and source and effects. And then zoom in. You can see that this is sharper than right here because that's where we have more of a black value. You can switch it around to get the look that you kind of want. But we can go into our blur map and if we show it again so we can see what we're doing, we can change these. There's a whole bunch of different presets. Um, so it really just depends on the kind of look that you're trying to go for. In this case, we'll do a uh, smeary, increase the contrast a little bit and then increase the brightness. And you just want to play around with this until you get the look that you kind of want. Then we can hide this. And then in our texture map, start by decreasing it to zero. Go to the very beginning. And this is more of an animated texture. You can leave it on the whole time if you want as well. So that's just kind of up to you. Keyframe the blur radius, go forward a couple seconds and then increase it a whole bunch. Uh, 150 will be pretty good. And as you can see, we're starting to get some pretty interesting looks. Now this is very intensive and it can create some really cool looks, but that's not really the thing I use it for the most. One thing I love to do with camera lens blur is taking certain parts of text or an image, blurring it and then adding some noise to it. So if I delete my blur map, remove 
the keyframes and just set that to 10 for now and I'll just hide it. So I'm going to select my shape tool and let's just go with an ellipse and I'm just going to change that to white and then I'm going to add a solid composite effect to it and set that to black. So now we have a white shape that we can move and the rest is just black. Now this is important because our blur map uses white and black values to decide where the blur goes. Also that I'm going to add a fast box blur. You can also use a Gaussian blur. I'm going to hide this layer and then I'm going to go back into my texture layer, open it up and change it to the shape layer and make sure it fix some masks on, invert that or redo the invert and then you can increase. And as you can see, our white circle is now shown with a lot of blur and only that. If we add a noise effect, we'll just do a simple one, increase it. You can see we get some really cool looks in the in the blur area part and kind of makes it look all. If you take that off and then take this camera lens blur, copy it, hide our texture layer and just add it to the text, we can get the same thing. But then if we add dissolve, you can see that it kind of generates the same effect by adding noise and doing it that way we have more control of it. This is a technique I use a whole bunch. Now the fourth way of adding texture is going to be rough and edges. And I'm just going to apply this just to my text layer. So if I do rough and edges, you can see we get this little boiled, wobbly to look almost similar to what we got with the table in this place. We have something like the complexity, which is basically just going to show if you go up to 10, it's going to be way sharper, kind of like we had in the second instance. But if we set it back to two and um, we get this very soft look and you can mess around with all the parameters. They have a couple of different presets like photocopy, which is pretty cool. And it gives you some texture in here. You can increase it. You get some more texture, play around with it. And if I hide the grid, you can see it even more. Rusty is a pretty cool one as well. I like to use this if I have a brush stroke and then I have a shape to reveal that brush stroke. I can add that and then I'll add a rough and edges. That'll just give me a little bit of a softer edge. It'll give me some texture in there. You can increase it a little bit. I like to go at about five and then you can increase the scale and mess around with the fractal influence and the edge sharpness and the border so just increase that a good bit and that'll give you a little bit more of a crazy look and that generally works pretty well for creating uh, a brush stroke animation reveal type thing um, and as you can see if you move it around the look of it changes because it's again it's based on a fractal map so it's kind of locked to that position it's a pretty cool effect i often combine it with the first way of adding turbulent displays just with some added texture in there we have one final boss of textures and that is looping textures if you want a really in-depth breakdown of textures looping textures creating your own textures i highly recommend watching sky's video on it i'll link it as well up in the corner and in the description essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a new composition so command n and i'm just going to name this texture and set that to let's do 10 frames. I'm just going to drag it in. Let's chop it right at one second. Select them all, right click, keyframe assistant, sequence layers. Okay. And then we can just take this, crop it down. So as it stands right now, this is what our animation looks like, which is super fast. I'm just going to scale everything up to make sure that they all cover the whole screen. That one included. I'm going to go back into my main composition and I'm going to drag in my texture looping thing and go to the very beginning of it zoom in right click time enable time remapping go to the end go one keyframe back set a keyframe delete the last keyframe or click the stopwatch and then add a loop out expression and that's just going to make sure that it loops continuously forever and ever so we just get loop 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 you can take this keyframe and you can drag it out to slow it down so if i drag it to one second you can see our animation is now a lot slower you can even go ahead and add a post rise time effect to the layer let's set that to six and that's just going to slow it down even more now you can use this in a lot of different ways you can use it as a background zoom in here so we can see our grid properly you can see we have a very nice background that's just going to loop we can combine it with our displacement map so if i add a displacement map to our texture text go and select that effects and masks and then now you can see that it kind of fits with the texture that's played we can exaggerate it just for the example and you can see how it changes with our background as well. So that's one way of going about it. I love adding a little bit more flair to it and one of the ways I like to do that is adding an adjustment layer, add post-rise time and these are also effects that can help create some visual interest. Think of them as texture effects because they add some texture in terms of the movement and stylization of it. I'm going to create another one, add a transform or click the position do a post rest time six wiggle 15 comma three i'm just going to drag that below as well below our 
transform effect our camera shake i'm gonna add another just my layer and i'm just gonna name i'm just gonna add try tone to it and that's essentially just gonna add a slight tint and i like using this effect to just add a little bit of color in somewhere so let's do a purplish color and then we can go in and add a curves adjustment I'm just gonna add that before the tritone. Play around with it until we get the look that we really want. And essentially a tritone is pretty much the same as the tint effect, except you have an extra color to play with. You could also add post the posterize effect itself, not posterize time. And that is essentially just gonna decrease the fidelity of the image. So the higher you go, the more colors you have. If you go down to two, you only have two colors. So you can play around with that to get some pretty interesting looks. So if I just show this back, we have something that looks kind of like this. And that is pretty much all for the different ways I like to add textures to my animations. You have actual looping textures. You have turbulent displays to get some boil effects. Displacement maps to add the texture of your background to your text. Even something like the camera lens below, which is a sick way of adding some noise or even some watercolor looking effects. Most importantly is to play around with it and make sure that whatever texture you add fits to the type of animation that you have. You don't want a super corporate looking animation with a lot of heavy grunge textures. The same way you don't want something that's supposed to be super grungy at 60 frames per second and way too smooth. So there's a lot of things to think about. And as always, if you need places to get textures, check out my best websites for designers video because I mentioned some sources in there. Thank you for watching along. I appreciate it and uh, I'll see you again uh, next week.